she's been driving our fundraising and along with uh, Sati Sara Prabhu she has gone to a few communities and uh, driving fundraising for the temple construction. Mataji also does kirtans and pujari service along with Rahul Prabhu they are a big support for our temple. With that let's welcome Mataji loudly chanting Hare Krishna Mahamantra one time. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare. Hare Krishna Mataji. And um, I can assure you that the, uh, that the learnings that I had as I was preparing for this class about Srimati Radharani were more than what I have had in the last 20 years. So that's why they say when you teach, you first learn yourself before you teach. So I hope I'm able to impart this correctly and I have asked Satisar Prabhu to chime in if I'm stating anything incorrectly. This is the first time in my life I'm doing a Radhashtami class. So please uh, forgive my offenses. So we normally start with Jai Radha Madhava. Today I want to start with what Srila Prabhupada used to uh, enjoy singing on Radha Ashtami. And you can, if you want to pull it on your phone, you can pull it on your phone. It's a very famous bhajan, Radhe Jai Jai Madhava Deite. Where is my kartal? Radhe Jaya Jaya Madhava Daite Radhe Jaya Jaya Madhava Daite Gokula Taruni Mandala Mahite Shabhanu Dadi Navashashi Lekhe Lalita Sakhi Guna Ramita Vishakhe Radhe Jaya Jaya Madhava Daite Karunam Guru Mai Karuna Bhari Te Karunam Guru Mai Karuna Bhari Te Sanaka Sanatana Varnita Chari Radhe Jaya Jaya Madhava Daite Gokula Taruni Mandala Mahite Gokula Radhe Jaya Jaya Madhava Daite Radhe Jaya Jaya Madhava Daite 
राघव दैते राधे जय जय माधव दैते So Srila Prabhupada used to sing this bhajan during uh, Radha Ashtami. I went through many of his lectures and I found it in all of them. So I thought, we don't have any knowledge on our own. Whatever we are uh, learning and whatever we are giving in class, it is just a repetition of what we are learning from Srila Prabhupada. So before we get into uh, more uh, in-depth content on Shrimati Radharani, and the, sub the subject is so expansive, so expansive, that it can take a at least a week to cover the whole subject of Shrimati Radharani. So I was very tempted, I want to inject this part of it, I want to inject that part of it, but knowing that we were restricted by time, I picked something that was going to be simple yet very profound to give us the importance of Srimati Radharani. So this song says, Radhe Jay Jay Madhav Daite. Radhe, Radhe is the way we address Radharani. Okay, so instead of Radha, we are saying Radhe because we are calling Radharani. Jay Jay, all glories to you, Radharani. Madhava Jayate, who is Radha? She is beloved of Madhav. And Madhav is, means husband of goddess of fortune okay we have a madhav here so i hope you're not uh, getting embarrassed madhav but you have a lovely name um so krishna he's the beloved in vrindavan okay and radharani as we will learn today is sarva lakshmi so radha is the origin of all the lakshmis so krishna is madhava husband of goddess of fortune and Radharani is the original Lakshmi, the source of all Lakshmis. So we are singing to Radharani, who is very dear, who is the beloved of Lord Shri Krishna. And there are many, uh, there are many, many uh, texts, if you read on the internet, which have a little convoluted uh, interpretation which also say Krishna is the avatar and they call Radharani as Lakshmi's avatar. It is actually the other way around. So you have to be very careful when you are reading these things on the internet because everybody has their own interpretation. According to Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, which is the, you know, scripture of all scriptures, if you can just read one in your lifetime, that is, you've covered all the Puranas and Vedas. It is very clear that Krishna is the origin Masculine in the masculine form and Radha is the origin in the feminine form. So continuing on this uh, song, Gokula Taruni Mandala Mahite. Radha Rani is glorified by all the young girls of Gokul because all the gopis and the gopikas are uh, Radha Rani's expansion. And this is what we have learned in Chaitanya Charita Matra. Every form of uh, every divine form in the female is Radharani's expansion. And the reason uh, Radharani was glorified by all the um, gopis was because one, they knew Radharani's constitutional position, they knew who Radharani is. And second, they always wanted to be like Radharani and they wanted to do what Radharani did. So she was like their, you know, um, uh, somebody who they would look up to and follow. Um, the next part of it says, Damodararati Vardhana Veshe. O Radharani. What this means is, Damodara we know is Lord Krishna. Okay, It is that form of Lord Krishna where Mother Yashoda ties him to the rope. Damodararati Vardhana Veshe. What this means is, Radharani, you dress yourself in such a way that you can increase Damodar's love and attachment for you. So we know the month of Damodar is soon coming. I think end of October it starts. Uh, and in that month we will again worship Lord Damodar and Radharani in a different form. But here they say that the way Radharani dresses up, it just increases Krishna's love and attraction to her. Hari Nishkutha Vrinda Vipineshe. 
This means, O oh Radha Rani, you are the queen of the forest of Vrindavan, which is, what is Vrindavan? Vrindavan is the pleasure grove of Sri Hari. Krishna is always residing in Vrindavan. What we see here in India, in UP as Vrindavan, that is just, a, think of it like, you know, children are uh, doing a project and they have to build a model for it. This is just a simple model of what real Vrindavan is in the spiritual world. So Radha is the queen of Vrindavan, and I'll cover later about the strength of Radha as the queen of Vrindavan. But what is Vrindavan? Vrindavan is where Krishna gets full pleasure. Vrishbhanu Dadi Navashashi Lekhe. So this means, O oh Radhika, you are the new moon goddess arisen from the ocean of King Vrishpanu. Vrishpanu is Radharani's father. But look at the description that is given in this bhajan. You are the new moon that is arisen from the ocean of... Think, just visualize if you are thinking you're on the beach and you can see the moon rising. That is how beautiful... Radharani was, is, and will be uh, when uh, Vrishabhanu saw her. Okay? And he was, Vrishabhanu had gone to the uh, um, river to bathe, and even before he reached the river, he felt a very strong uh, effulgence, you know, golden effulgence. And that is where he found Radharani on, um, in a lotus flower. So a lot of the, keep in mind, even though it looks like Krishna was born in the natural way and, you know, we know that really these are not, uh, the spiritual entities are not born and live like the way we live. They only come on this planet to do what would be role play for us so that we can remember and learn from them. But they are so divine that they don't need to be born through the normal process what all of us are born from. Lalita Sakhi Guna Ramita Vishakhe. So, uh, oh Radha, this says, you are the friend of Lalita and you give intimate pleasure to Vishakha. So in some temples you see, in Vrindavan temple, you have Lalita and Vishakha next to Radha and Krishna and they are serving Radha and Krishna, they have a fan in their hands. So these are the most uh, confidential, Lalita and Vishakha are the most confidential um, um, associates of Radharani. So for children, you can say these are your, what do you call it, BFFs. So th that is Lalita and Vishakha. They are so close and so intimate that they know everything about Radharani, okay? And so the most two, they're the two most confidential servitors of Radharani, and they give ple and Radharani gives them pleasure. Ra Radharani gives pleasure to everybody because Radharani has wonderful qualities. So as I was reading, I learned that uh, Ra Radharani has 25 qualities, transcendental qualities, and there's a long list you can look it up. I'm not going to cover that because we won't have enough time. And Krishna has 64 qualities. So by mathematical sense, Krishna has more qualities and Krishna is more, you know, superior, right, to Radharani. In the normal course of mathematics, that's what he'll say, 64 is more than 25. But the 25th quality of Radharani is that she can control Krishna. <laughs> so now think of it like one of your algebra equations. Now, you know, actually, Radharani has a higher position than Krishna. Even before I joined ISKCON, uh, even before I ever uh, came to any ISKCON temple, when I was, work I was 21 or 22 years old, and I had just graduated and started working, and one of our uh, vendors, um, he used to manage our pension fund in India, so... I had to call him very frequently because I worked in human resources, so I had to check up. And one day, I, they said, no, Mr. Malik has gone to Vrindavan. I'm like, what is he doing in Vrindavan now? Because Janmashtami was done. And for most people, they're not very aware of Radhashtami. 
So they said, no, um, Mr. Malik has gone for Radha Ashtami. I said, what is that? And uh, they said, then, Mr. Ma after, then they said, well, when Mr. Malik comes, we'll have him call you back. So I asked him, I was very curious, I said, what had you gone to Vrindavan for? And he explained to me, and he explained to me, that was the first time I heard that he told me the position of Radha is so superior, so superior that in Vrindavan, Radha Ashtami is celebrated with as much or even more, uh, uh, in, in a more grand way than uh, Janmashtami. You know, even though those words had no impact on me, you, because I, I was not even interested in learning the teachings that he was giving me, but he told me, so I said, so it just registered, okay, Radha Ashtami has a lot of importance. And over the years, how every Radha Ashtami, he's no more, but I always remember that unknowingly, how he imparted the importance and significance and position of Radha Rani to me. So how did this happen? It is not a coincidence. It is Radha Rani's mercy that that was her first introduction to me and not knowing that, you know, what is it now? Uh, 26, 28 years later, I'm going to be sitting and talking about Radha Rani. So that is how merciful Radha Rani is. And then uh, there are just two more verses which we'll cover and then we'll get into the chapter. The next uh, uh, line of the, um, the next verse is, Karunam kurumai karuna bharite Karuna. Karuna means mercy, full of compassion and mercy. So we are saying, Radharani, please be merciful for me. That is why we say, Hare Krishna. And I'm going to cover in depth why in Vrindavan they say Radhe Radhe. Mm. the uh, Gujarati Vaishnava say Jai Shri Krishna and why we say Hare Krishna. I'll cover that in a few uh, minutes. But Hare is when we are calling Radha. It's like Radhe, this is Hare because Hara means Radha and I'll cover uh, in a little bit why Hara, why that word Hara. So Prabhupada points out, first we in this, in our Hare Krishna Mahamantra also, First, we address the feminine side of the absolute truth, okay? Whoever made ladies first was right, okay? So first, we address the feminine side of the absolute truth. What's the absolute truth? Shri Krishna. But unlike us, where we are only female or male, Krishna being God, he has a masculine side and a feminine side. And that feminine side is Radha. So the absolute truth is one, okay? But it is separated into two. The feminine aspect is where we get compassion from and mercy from, okay? So if we approach the Lord as Radha Krishna, Sita Ram, Lakshmi Narayan, we are sure to know that we are approaching God in the right way because when you please the feminine, compassionate, a side of somebody, when you can win the compassionate side of someone, you are sure to get their mercy. And Krishna cannot say no if Radha Rani wants to be merciful on somebody. So I'm sure, you know, the gentlemen sitting on the other side know how true this is in real life. You have to say, ask mom, don't ask me. You know, you have to tell your kids that. Or if somebody is coming and wants to get the job done, you have to say, wait, I need to check with my wife if I can invite you for dinner or not, right? So it is, uh, and again, this is not about one being higher than the other. This is just about the different roles. And so nobody should walk away from here thinking that, you know, Mataji gave the class that women are superior. That is not what I'm communicating. I don't want to create a fight between uh, couples tonight. But what is important to know is we are playing different roles and no role is less important. Okay, that is the key. And then Sanaka Sanatana Varnita Charite. So Sanaka and Sanatana, they were two of, of, of the Kumara brothers. Okay, and Kumara brothers are son of, uh, sons of Brahmaji. And they say, oh Radha, your divine characteristics are de described by the great sages Sanak and Sanatana. 
so that is how uh, how high radharani's position is that greatest of great sages are describing radharani's qualities so let's go to what shrila prabhupad says now some serious stuff what's important is radharani is not a subject that you know we don't every sunday we do bhagavad gita class in the mornings we do bhagavatam class we don't do radharani classes all the time right because radharani is a very deep subject and it is a very mysterious subject which cannot be understood in our current form where we think of a man and a woman relationship in a very contaminated way so that is why shila prabhupad said uh, radharani is the deepest mystery buried so you know all the uh, sages ved vyas also knew how the kaliyug is going to progress and how people's intelligence is going to work so that is why they buried it in the vedic scriptures you will not see radha's name so many times in uh, bhagavatam other than the uh, 10th canto and the reason for that is they kn- they knew that people are not going to understand such a divine relationship and bollywood has messed up the whole relationship of radha and krishna and all those songs on radha whatever but uh, what is important to know is this is not a light subject and i from the day jaisu bhadra mata ji told me i've been reading and i'm like this is an unending subject it is a very difficult to understand subject so what we want to understand is just the top line so that we don't go and misunderstand the the divine relationship of radha and krishna according to a particular shri prabhupad says according to a person's level of spiritual awareness and their inclinations so all of us have different dispositions right some like spicy food some like uh, you know sweet food some like certain type of uh, um i mean entertainment shows some like others right so our each of us has a different disposition so depending on your disposition you will understand radha rani differently and like i mentioned bollywood is a classic example of how radha rani is understood when your disposition is like that so shila vyasadev has compiled the vedic literatures in a way to elevate the consciousness of humanity so the intent of shrimad bhagavatam was to make us all to a platform where we understand krishna if we are going to get caught up in the contaminated form of the divine relationship then how are we going to elevate so all our acharyas have taught us one thing that this is a very confidential and very mysterious subject so it is okay for you to cover it at a very uh, high level only one who is advanced in krishna consciousness and very well conversant with the shastras can develop an understanding for such things i mean who are we to understand krishna we don't even understand krishna after reading bhagavad gita after reading krishna book after doing everything how are we going to understand radha rani because her uh, character has not even been spelt out as much as krishna's has so we should accept that we have limited intelligence and we are just going to follow what ved vyas has given us in the bhagavatam and even chaitanya charitamrita uh, talks about uh, the relationship of radha and krishna so those are the two books which i would say because i'm reading and reading i'm like this is wrong this is wrong and uh, there were so many uh, versions that i had to say no this is not making sense because it did not align with the version in bhagavatam and chaitanya charitamrita and we know ved vyas and chaitanya mahaprabhu nobody can be uh, you know more accurate than them so by that logic you would say why are you giving the radha ashtami class then because if it is such a difficult topic and if it is not spoken much about then what's the point in doing this class so class ended let's have prashad <laughs> no there is still things that we can understand at a simple level which are discussed in the shastras okay when krishna himself wanted to understand radha rani what did he do anyone yes he came as chaitanya mahaprabhu chaitanya mahaprabhu is krishna 
but he has accepted the propensities, the qualities of Radharani. As Radharani is always feeling separation from Krishna, similarly, the uh, in the position of Radharani, Lord Chaitanya was feeling separation from Krishna. So he wanted to experience that because even Lord Krishna did not understand the depth of Radharani's love. So the only way he could do it is by coming in the form of Radharani and then experiencing it. So that is the teaching of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. If we do not feel that separation from the Lord, that when will I see you? Okay, it is in the Shikshashtakam also. When will I see you? Then we are, then we are actually, you know, whatever we are doing is not, uh, not breaking through the covering of our uh, soul. We are still the same. We are doing it in a ritualistic manner. So whatever you do, whether you do 10 minutes of service or whether you do 10 hours of service, if your heart is not in that service, it is just, you know, mm, a, a, just like a routine activity then you don't benefit from it. You benefit when you have the feeling, when you're cooking, I am cooking for Krishna and Radha. Uh, like how we say, I'm cooking this for my child because she likes to eat this. So we have to have the same attachment to Krishna and Radha. And that's when we'll feel the separation that why am I cooking from here? Why am I not cooking where you are live in front of me and I can serve you? So, in the, uh, it is said, Shri Krishna Chaitanya, Radha Krishna Nahe Anya. Means Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is not different from Radha and Krishna. He is a combination of Radha and Krishna. So when we come to, when we start reading Bhagavad Gita, we are taught absolute truth, absolute truth, supreme personality of Godhead, supreme personality of Godhead is Krishna, right? So we are taught Krishna is the master of all living beings. But then Vyasa Dev goes into the deeper mysteries and he says, now let's, if you have understood and if you have faith up to this point, now let's take it a step further and understand the spontaneous. So Radha and Krishna are not like ordinary people who are thinking, oh, you know, my um, lover or my husband or my boyfriend is coming, so what can I do to prepare for it? They, they don't have to do that. Everything is very spontaneously flowing for them. And in Bhagavad Gita also it says that when, I don't remember the exact verse, but it says when we develop that spontaneity for Krishna, okay, where we don't have to say, oh, I have to do my rounds. You are doing your rounds with or without the mala. You are continuously doing your rounds. That is spontaneity. And we will get to that stage. I guarantee everybody today here that if you practice it, we will all get to that stage. Because I saw my parents come into Krishna consciousness somewhere in their mid-50s. So they did not come into Krishna consciousness for a very long time. And we were all grown up and left the house by then. Today my dad is 87, my mom is over 80. And they are like, even if they are watching TV sometimes, they are just doing what is called a japa jap. They are sitting in the car, they are doing jap. So initially it was like we were not used to it, you know, that they are sitting in the car and they are continuously chanting. And you can hear, they are not like chanting loudly. But now it comes spontaneously. So for me, the biggest faith in this was what I have seen in my own parents. And I have, I not only have that thousand percent faith, I can tell you, if all of you in this room, or who you impart this to, if you are going to chant sincerely, it is going to become spontaneous. You will not need to think about chanting. That is the stage we have to reach, where we think of Krishna, even without thinking that I need to think of Krishna. Okay? So the absolute truth is one, but one, the, but that one truth is eternally manifested in the form of male and female personalities. So why did Krishna create this whole, my husband asks me sometimes, why did God make it so complex? And why can't we leave it simple? And sure, you can ask that question too, but I tell him, 
well it's up to you it's all on our mindset right even if you go for corporate education they say it's all in the mindset if you think you can do it you can do it in hindi there's a um, phrase called man ke jeete jeet man ke haare haar so what that means is whatever you condition your mind to that is the way you're going to look at it i was telling my husband no it can be complex of course because we have limited intelligence so you can't blame you know you go to a scientist today or you go to a phd professor in computer science you're not going to understand what they talk because they have a different level of intelligence and education right so for that matter even you know all the companies who have made all these products are complex so i'm like what is not complex everything is complex right now this is a complexity which because we don't have that knowledge we find it even more complex so let's simplify it my whole strategy is if something is complex simplify it because what is the end goal of reading all these scriptures nobody can understand krishna by reading all these scriptures the end goal is to light that bhakti ka diya in our heart to have that faith that unshaken faith that it doesn't matter whatever happens you know what if it happens according to my wish great if it doesn't then there must be a bigger and better plan for me and i have to be patient and have that faith so the core intent in reading all these scriptures we are not going to remember after this lifetime if we come next lifetime even if we go back to krishna we're going to be so mesmerized by krishna that what are we going to think of these scriptures these scriptures are for us to build strong faith because if you're just going to chant hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare hare and you don't know what you're doing how are you going to get faith now think you have the full faith and now you chant the maha mantra it has a different outcome so the bhavana with which the feeling with which we do our worship is how we get the result a simple example of this is you may have two children mothers day fathers day whatever events you celebrate one will you know uh, come and give you a gift and say here's a card happy mothers day okay i touch you like this and i go the other one will say i did this and i'm going to cook your favorite meal and i'm going to you know i'm going to really give it my time energy love you can tell the difference right so krishna can also tell the difference so always whatever you do do with love for krishna and just um, so we know that it is the male and the female aspect so uh, sorry i was covering why did he create uh, this female personality so krishna gives love to everybody krishna gives mercy krishna gives knowledge krishna gives love to everybody right we are all children of krishna but who is going to give love to krishna look at us we still don't have that love for krishna so krishna created this female uh, aspect of himself so he could share love and he could he could serve radharani because everybody serves krishna but krishna wanted to taste what service is like so that is why he expanded in the form of radharani to serve radharani so many pictures you will see he is holding radharani's feet because all of us go and touch krishna's feet krishna touches radharani's feet and it is said in uh, bhagavatam krishna stu bhagavan swayam krishna is the source of all incarnations he is the pleasure potency okay but who is his shakti who gives krishna pleasure pleasure shrimati radharani is also called ladini shakti uh, because she is giving she is the source of pleasure for krishna shila prabhupada explains that shrimati radharani is nothing but the transformation of krishna's supreme love so while we all want to give love to krishna krishna wants to give his love he is of course waiting for us to give his love to us but in the he also wants to serve someone and that someone is shrimati radharani so it's a transformation of his love she is the personification of all spiritual love and that love is so powerful that it controls krishna 
So one of her qualities is that she can control Krishna. She's not controlling Krishna as a, you know, uh, in a format where Krishna is um, subservient to her and she is uh, in a, what is that called, uh, dictatorship way. She's not like a dictator to Krishna. No, she loves Krishna. So how does she control Krishna? Through his love. And in the month of Damodar, you will all be here and we will learn how Krishna is controlled not just by Radharani's love. Krishna is controlled by the love of his devotees. So any devotee who has pure love for Krishna, Krishna becomes their servitor. Srila Prabhupada explains, we pray to Radharani because she is the pleasure potency of Krishna. Who is Krishna? Krishna is all attractive. Okay, Krishna is all attractive, but who is attractive to Krishna? Krishna gets attracted by Radharani and she attracts Krishna. So we should understand the position of Srimati Radharani and offer our obeisances to her. You can all say this with me. Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrinda Vaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Hari Priye Radharani is Hari Priya very very dear to Krishna. Approaching Krishna becomes very easy when it is done through Radharani. So if you want to go and meet the president, you cannot just walk in and meet the president. You have to approach people in his office who can then, you know, keep removing blockers to meet the president, right? Like that, if we have to approach Krishna, we have to approach Krishna through Radharani because she's Hari Priya. So if, you know, she's so dear to Krishna, uh, if Radharani recommends to Krishna that this devotee is very nice. What is your name? Diya. Diya. If Radharani recommends to Krishna that Diya is a very good devotee, then Krishna will immediately accept uh, um, her as his devotee. So, in Vrindavan, now let's go to in Vrindavan. Everybody who has been to Vrindavan, you know, the rickshawala, the storekeeper, the, anybody, Radhe Radhe. Even if they want to tell you, move out the, of my way, they'll say Radhe Radhe. They won't say Hato, they will say Radhe Radhe. Okay? So, everybody in, Vrinda, uh, in Vrindavan says Radhe Radhe. Okay? And they are glorifying Radha Rani. And they are really interested in serving Radharani. Why? Because Radharani is so merciful. Even the fallen of the fallen can please Radharani. And secondly is, Radha is Vrindavaneshwari. So she is the queen of Vrindavan. You never hear of a king of Vrindavan. You hear queen of Vrindavan. Krishna was king of Dwarka. But he made Radharani queen of Vrindavan. That's another reason why Vrindavan devotees are saying Radhe Radhe. So, um, because if you don't understand Krishna through Radha, it becomes very difficult to understand Krishna. So then why do we chant Hare Krishna? Why don't we chant Radhe Radhe? That was the first question that would come up in our mind, right? If it is so easy to please Radha Rani, and uh, if that is more beneficial, why are we choosing the less beneficial path? No, we are not. So, the conclusion is we are not and here is why. Now think of yourself as Krishna and Radha are one, we already said that, it is one absolute truth in two forms. So even though they have taken two forms, they, she's, he is the Shakti Man and she is the Shakti. So you cannot separate them, you cannot separate the sunlight from the sun or the moonlight from the moon. Like that way you cannot separate Radha from Krishna. So now think of this, everything in the spiritual world is personified, so Radha is a person, Krishna is a person, that's how we see them, right? So if we chant only Radhe Radhe, then we're not chanting Krishna's name. Radha may say, yeah, you're taking my name, but you're not taking Krishna's name, because what gives Radha Rani more pleasure if we chant Krishna's name? And what gives Krishna more pleasure if we chant Radha Rani's name? So now, in the 16th syllable, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Eight times we say Hare, 
we are calling Radha Rani and eight times we are calling Krishna in the form of Krishna and Ram. So now we made, we've balanced it out. So Radha Rani is very happy that we are chanting Krishna's name and Krishna is very happy that we are chanting Radha Rani's name. So uh, worshippers of Vishnu as we know are called uh, Vaishnavas. Worshippers of Krishna are called Krishnavas. So are we Vaishnavas or are we Krishnavas? We are an expansion of Vaishnavas which is Gaudiya Vaishnavas. Gaudiya Vaishnavas worship Radha and Krishna together. They do not worship Krishna alone or Radha alone. Why? Because Krishna and Radha are one. The complete form is Krishna and Radha. So why would we not worship the complete form? Why would we only worship partial form? Putting a lot of energy, right, in worshipping and remembering Krishna, so you better get the full benefit of it. So I think Chaitanya Mahaprabhu thought about all those questions that people in this yuga are going to ask for their own benefit. And he gave us that, you know, easy path, plus he gave us the optimal solution for this age. Now let's go into the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. So Hari, Hari is the name of Krishna, okay? And Hari means somebody who steals our heart. Hari we also call somebody who takes away our miseries. Okay? In this example, let's, let's contain it to Hari steals our heart. Because when Krishna steals my heart, my love for Krishna will be spontaneous. So we want Krishna to steal our heart. We're not worried about Krishna stealing our miseries. We want Krishna to steal our heart. Okay? So, uh, who steals our heart and by how does he steal our heart? Because he is so beautiful, he is so all attractive and he has all those qualities. I mean, when we stand in front of the deities, for a minute we don't think that this is not real Krishna. We don't feel that way at all because there is so much power. Krishna manifests in this form of the deity. And then Hara, Hara is the feminine aspect of the Lord. So Hari is the masculine aspect, Hara is the feminine aspect. And Hara is the supreme pleasure potency of the Lord. So if Hara, which we address, when we address Hara, we say Hare, she is the internal potency of the God, she is Srimati Radharani. So Krishna is, like I said, Shakti Man and Radha is his Shakti. Radha is the internal potency. So instead of remembering Krishna as Jai Shri Krishna or remembering Radha Rani as Radhe Radhe. How do we remember the absolute form in, in their two masculine and feminine manner? By saying Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And Hare means we are calling Radha Rani. Radha Rani, please come. Uh, because when Radharani hears that we are calling Krishna and Rama, she immediately comes to us to help us. And when Krishna hears that we are calling Radharani, he immediately comes. So this is the perfect way of getting mercy of both. And knowing that Radharani is more merciful, our chances are increased. Someone asked Srila Prabhupada, this was really funny, so I thought I'll include this in. Krishna makes us fast till midnight, okay? But Radharani only makes us fast till 12 noon, till midday. Why is that so? So why do we fast less for Radharani if Radharani is so superior? And why do we fast more for Krishna? So Prabhupada had a very witty answer to it. He says, that's because Radharani is more merciful to her devotees. So... Uh, for many years, many of you know, I lived in Los Angeles and the temple there is Sri Sri Rukmini Dwarkadish temple, okay? So the deities are very similar to this and they are very beautiful like this and they are Rukmini Dwarkadish. But it is not actually Dwarkadish, it is actually Krishna. Why do we know it is Krishna? Because even that Krishna, Dwarkadish has a flute and when he has a flute, he is no different from Krishna. And Rukmini Devi is no one other than Srimati Radharani because all the female expansions, Lakshmi, Rukmini, all the um, 16,108 wives of Krishna, 
all the gopis, they're all expansions of Srimati Radharani, including Durga Ma, the Shakti Avatar. All of them are uh, expansions of Radharani. So Prabhupada teaches us that I, I spoke in the beginning that this is a very uh, difficult to understand topic with our current bodies, okay? So Prabhupada has taught us one very important thing that even though we are worshipping Radha Krishna, okay, we are not worshipping them as Radha Krishna the way they are worshipped in Golok Vrindavan. Because in Golok Vrindavan they are worshipped in a very intimate way. And we don't have the understanding or the ability to worship them in that manner. So when we are worshipping, how do we worship? With respect, with awe, with reverence, with, you know, uh, treating them like king and queen. We are worshipping them in that form. So actually the worship of Radha and Krishna that we do uh, here, in, uh, here as in, in this age and on this planet, is the way Lakshmi and Narayan are worshipped in Vaikuntha. So we cannot think that this is the way Radha and Krishna worshipped in Golok Vrindavan. They are not made to stand in one place and we uh, do, you know, or seated in one place like king and queen and we do arati for them. No, it is a very different form which we will not understand and not get, uh, since nobody came back from there to tell us how that worship happens, even though the scriptures have some definition, but we cannot experience that till we reach there. So right now, the best form of us to worship Radha Krishna is in the form of uh, awe and reverence that you are so beautiful, you are my master, you are my lord, and we worship them as uh, being subservient to them. That is the right way for us to worship, and that is the way if you reach Vaikuntha, instead of Golok Vrindavan, then you will worship them in that way till the time you develop that love for Krishna and then reach Golok Vrindavan. So there is a shloka, and I'm looking at the time, yeah, we have time, that describes Radharani. It's a very beautiful shloka. And, um, or you can, uh, you know, in English they call it verse. Uh, it is described in a scripture called Brihad Gautamiya Tantra. And it's a very easy shloka. So because today is Radha Ashtami, we should all recite the shloka and very quickly go through what the shloka means. So I will say the first line, you please repeat. Devi Krishna Mai Prokta Radhika Paradevata Sarva Lakshmi Mai Sarva Kanti Samohini Para. Let's do it again. Devi Krishna Mai Prokta. Devi Krishna Mai Prokta. Radhika Para Devata. Radhika Para Devata. Sarva Lakshmi Mai. Sarva Kanti Samohini Para. So Devi, we all know Devi is goddess, but here we are talking about Radha Rani. So she is that goddess who is shining so beautifully. What is Radha Rani's complexion? Molten gold. So that's why we say Tapta Kanchan Gaurangi. Krishna Mai. Krishna Mai means she is not any different from Krishna. They are one and the same. Paradevata means most worshipable. So the first line, Devi Krishna Mai Prokta, means that goddess who shines so beautifully in that golden color is not any different from Krishna. She is the same as Krishna. They are one and different at the same time. Okay? And she is most worshipable. Then it says, Sarva Lakshmi Mai, means she presides over all the goddesses of fortune. She is the original Sarva Lakshmi, the original Lakshmi. And we know that in Vaikuntha, Lakshmi and Narayan are together, right? And so that Lakshmi is also an expansion of Radharani. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, it says that Krishna is the origin of all incarnations. And Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita that there is no 
truth that is superior to him. Everything emanates from Krishna. And in chapter 7, verse 7, it says, Matta paratam nanyat kinchid asti dhananjaya mai sarvam idam protam sutremani gana eva. He says to Arjuna, O conqueror of wealth, one of Arjuna's name is Dhananjaya, conqueror of wealth. There is no superior, so you know, all my passwords come from uh, 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 Krishna book and from Bhagavatam. So when it is month of uh, uh, Karthik, all the passwords change into that. Uh, so uh, my list of passwords, Govinda, Madhava, Damodara, Dhananjaya, it's like list of those. Why? Not that we cannot think of other passwords, but we, we want to remember Krishna at every point. You're opening your, you're logging into something, type Krishna's name. That way he's going to be ingrained in our, like in English they say, you know, this, this whole feeling is ingrained in my DNA. For us it's not DNA, it's in our, in our consciousness, in our soul, it is going to be ingrained. So I thought of Dhananjaya because I just changed one of my passwords. to Dhan I was running out of names, so I was like, okay, now what name do we use? Um, so there is no truth superior to me, he tells Arjuna. Everything rests on me, and how does it rest on him? Like the pearls are strung on the thread. I mean, no offense, but there are people who say, prove God, I don't believe in God, I, you know, I'm a free religion, all sorts of things. Okay, I'm spiritual, but I'm not religious. I've heard so many things and I'm like, my God, what a complex world we live in. I'm, what do you mean by I'm spiritual, but I'm not religious? So, bottom line is that think of, just answer one question. How does the sun rise every day, sunset every day? It has such a strict pattern. Okay, sun doesn't forget to rise, doesn't forget to set. Then weather uh, are, you know, yes, we do have some weather conditions, but those are also given by the gods. But in general, there is so much in this life that ends up being so perfect. You know, scientists cannot, if you need blood, they cannot make blood in the lab till today and try and transfuse blood. It's just not doable, right? Even today when they need bone marrow, they need it from a real live person. They cannot. Likewise, when I was expecting our first child, I was just reading about, you know, uh, the whole pregnancy and I was like, wow, it is a miracle how majority of the children are still born normal. Because the chances of things going wrong is so high, but look at God's creation. Whether it is one seed that you sow and a plant comes and it gives a fruit which has seeds in it or whether it is a child that is born from two cells. Everything is so magical. So for anybody who doesn't believe, you can have one conversation with them. Do not waste your time having a second conversation because you know what? If that, that is the path they've chosen, good for them. I know sometimes we may have people like that in our family and we feel uh, really obligated to help them. So do that to the extent possible. But there is no doubt and there is no dearth of evidence how Krishna, everything, not only this earth, the moon doesn't change its place, it doesn't come closer or go farther or doesn't turn around. Every planetary system, everything runs perfectly. This cannot just be some kind of a gravitational force. If it is, where did it come from? So Krishna says, I am everything. Everything rests on me like a, a string on which the pearls are strung. So Krishna, we understood his origin. Radharani is origin of the gopis. Krishna is origin of you know, Narayan, Vishnu. Radharani is origin of all the shaktis. Sarvakanti. Sarvakanti. The first definition of Sarvakanti is whatever gives you, Kanti means splendor. So it gives you a lot of splendor, pleasure. The other meaning of Sarvakanti is that Krishna's desires get fulfilled from Srimati Radharani. So we have desires, we go to Krishna for our desires. Krishna goes to Radharani for his desires. So Radharani is that person, as soon as Krishna wants something, all his desires are fulfilled. How? By Radharani. 
and then she is also known as sam mohini sam mohini means her nature her character her qualities are such that absolutely bewilders and um absorbs krishna so mohini you know she is uh, krishna is madan mohan radharani is madan mohan mohini she can um, attract and uh, captivate krishna so krishna is god we know nobody is superior to him he is the reservoir of pleasure we all heard that in bhagavad gita and shrimati radharani is the reservoir of pleasure for krishna one of radha's qualities like i said is to control krishna and because krishna gets full satisfaction only from shrimati radharani and the word para is used here para means superior energy so in chapter 7 of bhagavad gita krishna describes there are two types of energies the material energy and the spiritual energy and he says the material energy is the inferior energy and the spiritual energy is the superior energy so where does the superior energy come from from radharani okay and we almost done this material energy so material energy so think of it this way i was listening it is think of it this way when you are a child you like to play with a toy car right now somebody comes and says hey i got a gift for you they got me that car that toy car that i loved to play when i was a child now you give me a toy car i'm going to say what am i going to do with this toy car right now right so like that even though the material energy is krishna's energy okay just the superior energy is krishna's energy material energy is also krishna's energy so even though we are saying please donate to build the temple krishna doesn't need our money this is our own kar- karma that we are doing so that we do charity in the mode of transcendence and build temples this is for our own benefit that krishna gives us this opportunity so he doesn't need anything for him it is like you know us contributing money for the temple it's like you coming and giving me that child toy car i'm going to say okay i don't need this toy car but for your own benefit if you want to make me feel good and you know make me feel nostalgic okay i will i will respect you and i will do it that is how krishna is to us everything we do is so little compared to what krishna has we can't even come close to what krishna has and but that is the analogy for what krishna has and what we give but that doesn't mean we don't give we give because we are benefiting ourselves in your bank accounts and in your 401k you put your spouse as your primary beneficiary here for our our activities in krishna consciousness we are our own beneficiary so whatever you are doing you are the beneficiary when my kids used to not study i would tell them listen you study for four years nicely you you were you are going to secure your next 40 years and you fool around for these four years of high school you are going to mess up your 40 years of life and after a while i realized this message didn't go through so finally i told my children i i i had to i had to withdraw and i had to say i'm only going to do my duty so i told them one thing listen do you know who is going to live with you the longest they said you i said no uh they started saying my children or whatever i said no you are going to live with yourself the longest so whatever you are doing you are the beneficiary or you are the sufferer now you decide you want to study you don't want to study it's your problem and i gave them a little bit of guilt in that way and they started doing it because till the time you tell somebody chant chant they will not chant once you tell them it is for your benefit now it is up to you you want to benefit yourself or not then they will start chanting uh so in the end i just want to say that last night before i slept we were listening to this uh, kirtan the mayapuri kirtan and most of you we also sung a portion of it when we were here for janmashtami it's jai radhe jai radhe जय श्री कृष्ण जय जय राधे जय राधे जय राधे जय श्री कृष्ण जय जय राधे जय राधे जय राधे जय राधे जय राधे जय राधे 
जय श्री कृष्णा जय जय राधे